Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today it is time to have a look at the Warbon Shop for November of 2019. Now this Warbon Shop is slightly different to the ones that we've had before, in a very positive way actually. There is a bunch of really interesting vehicles that are on offer here, and also a really cool decal plus a little bit extra on top of it. So they've really gone all out for this Warbon Shop, and I hope it is a sign of what is to come, especially in the new year when it comes to this style of thing. Remember, the Warbon Shop is a completely free system in the game where you yourself as a player are able to complete daily tasks and special tasks every month and get yourself uh, some of the rare or just premium vehicles in the game. This uh, system is very unique compared to pretty much every other game out there, whereas uh, if you just play the game, you're able to get yourself premium vehicles that uh, other people have to pay for GE. Also, every so often, they bring back some rare vehicles, such as the TB3M, which is back this uh, month, and also some nice decals and other stuff on top of it. So, let's go through what is here. If you need an explanation of how the uh, Warbond system works, uh, I've done it in some of the previous videos, in this series and also they've actually linked their dev blog here which goes back to the 31st of August 2017. I remember covering this back then and uh, wondering if uh, special tasks were going to go over to the next month and basically saying that that would be the change that I would make and unfortunately that never caught on but you know what uh, you, you win some battles you lose some others <laughs> it's kind of as simple as that. So the vehicles that are available in this month's Warbond shop to keep are the Achilles 65 Regiment, so a premium uh, vehicle for the British, KV-1B 756, this is the KV-1B with the long 75 from the Germans, the HS-129B2, of course the wonderful duck, the Chiha Shortgun, uh, the Elko 80 footer PT-556, which is a really good, uh, a really good boat to get actually, and then the TB-3M 1732, obviously this a big hunk of stuff and then you've got the Yak-3 for France. So this is an incredibly strong lineup. I think this is probably the strongest when it's come to Warbond shops that I've seen in maybe six months. There's many here that you would pick up for different reasons. There isn't a clear favorite uh, when it comes to, you know, which one to pick up. It really depends on what you want them for, so that's really cool. The decal, or the pinup, which is here this time, is the Mary Rose, and this is what it looks like. It seems to be for the number six squadron, the Mary Rose right here, and of course showing off those luscious legs in time for Halloween. On top of this as well, you have the normal stuff that we'll go through when we get there. And a new addition, which is the trophy box, the Warbon Shop decals from 2019. Now, one of the things that I talked about in an improvements to the Warbon Shop video a while back was the idea of bringing back older decals. The reason for this was uh, a lot of the time, especially if you want like something like, let's say, this KV-1B, you're going to miss out on this decal. You're either going to have to go for one or the other. And since the decals are incredibly nice, like they, they are some of the most wonderful decals in the game, incredibly well done. It seems a shame that a lot of players, if they're going for the premium vehicles, are not going to get access to the decals. So bringing back a randomized box which has access to those decals would be a really nice thing to do. And it seems like that's what they're doing, at least for 2019. Now the question is, will this extend into the next year? Well, we're going to see in two months' time. And also on top of this, uh, the trophy case uh, seems to have stayed the same. So we're not really going to comment on that. Uh, just, you know, remember that the Trophy Vehicles 3 is exactly the same. And of course, you've got the Universal Backup, so that's very useful for top-tier vehicles, especially stuff like the Type 90. And the reason for that is because it doesn't really have any backup MBTs, so you might have to take it out a few times just to keep on track with other nations. The two that they highlight is the Chiha Shotgun and the KV-1B. I would have personally uh, actually highlighted the uh, the 
the Elko and the TB3M, but we'll get to those uh, as we go along. So if you want to find the Warbond Shop in the game, uh, it's basically up here uh, in your shop, and then go to Warbond Shop. Uh, you have access to the old Warbond Shop, which is the one right here. This is from last month. So if there is something that you want to pick up, you still have you know time as long as you've got the right shop level. On top of this as well, now when it comes to this month, you can see here that everything is ready to go. You just need to get your special tasks done, your rank for your dailies, and also your war bonds. So make sure those are all in order. As I said, go and read that article if you're a little bit confused. So yeah, this one hasn't changed, as so you don't have to worry too much about that. And also remember, all of these are on the Gaijin markets. So if you're a PC player, you can get access to these for some Gaijin coin. And also, the boxes are also available on there. Uh, but remember, Remember, as uh, these boxes get rotated out, the general battle trophies get a bit more expensive, so it's definitely a thing to think about in the long term. So let's go through what's on offer. We obviously have the 75%, always good, uh, but uh, only worth 10 war bonds, so easy to pick up. Universal backups, uh, which of course uh, for top tier players is very useful. Then we have the general battle trophy case and the uh, order case, normally the weakest ones, but if you've got, basically if I have 3,600 stuff and I don't have anything unlocked, then I basically just pick up this one and hope to get, uh, hope to get, um, you know, lucky on a booster. I don't need SL stuff, and when it comes to general boosters, uh, you can see, you know, I've got a decent amount. I've still already got some that I'm going to use tomorrow to be grinding out some of the new vehicles, so yeah. The next thing is the test drive. So obviously the test drives are something that you can pick up for quite cheap, uh, but you do have the problem where you may only get them for a day, uh, three hours, or an hour. So if you get it for a day, you know, you get the vehicle for a long time. If you only get it for an hour, it definitely doesn't feel useful. So the first one to guess is the Project 7U Strong Yi, which is of course the premium destroyer, which was a pre-purchase destroyer for the Soviet Navy. It has access to better guns than its counterpart in the tech tree, uh, just like all of the uh, destroyers do. And of course uh, it is at 4.3, so you're not going to get up to it into the 5.7 hellhole of light cruisers and heavy cruisers. So you can actually do pretty well with this machine. With four 130s, you are pretty well armed, but you are not the best uh, armed out there, and you don't have really any uh, armor to speak of, so uh, you really do have to make sure to make those 130s sing. Overall, it's a fun little machine. Uh, if you are grinding the Soviet Navy, it's definitely something to think about since there don't seem to be any other options for that in this. The Calliope is the next one to get a test drive for, the good old Calliope. Now, I will say, uh, when it comes to the darkness, you can see uh, the Gaijin made a change to the post FX settings, uh, either in 189 or 191 or 193, and my shadows are all over the place. You can see here, this thing looks like it's straight out of a Halloween decoration. So just understand that I am fiddling around with the post effects, trying to make it a little bit better, but it isn't, <laughs> it isn't the best, uh, as you can see. So anyway, the Calliope, it's a little bit of fun. Like, uh, it's just a 75 Sherman, which has access to a bunch of 114M8 rockets on the top. The rockets themselves, when it first came out, this thing was insane, because the rockets didn't really care about pen, they pretty much negated armor, so this thing uh, actually ruined uh, the first uh, E100 event for me, and uh, also on top of this, it meant that you could pretty much kill anything you touched. Nowadays, not so much. It's definitely not as powerful as before because of the addition of more realistic game mechanics. Uh, so overall, it's a little bit of a fun machine, but it's not something that you're going to do to, you know, grind with. The AC4, this is, of course, uh, the Australian machine for rank 3 of the British. Uh, the 17-pounder is really nice on this machine, and the general speed of it is okay. Also, the reload rate is good as well. One of the only problems with this machine is you don't get access to Sabo, but at 5.3, uh, you'll face a lot of Tigers and stuff like that, so you, should, you still should be able to pen them very easily with these rounds. You have great gun depression, as I said, decent speed behind you, and uh, the fact that you have three people 
in the turrets means you're going to get one shot a lot. Uh, but one thing I will always say about this machine, because you don't see a lot of these around, uh, you end up in a situation where a lot of people will shoot you, and they don't particularly know where to shoot you. This turret has a lot of weird angles on it, which give it way more armor than it did, than it deserves. You can see easily going up to 110, 120 on certain areas of it, but the best place to shoot it is right here, right, right on the driver's hatch, uh, because no matter what you shoot it with, you're still stuck with only about 60 millimeters worth of armor. Shoot through that, you can hit the ammo, you can hit everything in the turrets, but a lot of people won't know to shoot it there. You know, instead they might shoot it around this area here, which is <laughs> maybe not there, uh, but they'll shoot it around maybe you know this area here or you know down here a little bit, which is uh, you know where you generally shoot something uh, which is British, but you can't do that on this machine. It's definitely not as easy uh, not to crack as some of the other machines that you'll run into. So yeah, uh, I I actually like the AC4, but the moment that it gets started playing more, uh, you know, in the game is the moment that it loses so many of its advantages because people realize how weak its armor actually is if you know where to shoot the damn thing, you know, right here. So yeah, uh, for me, it's fun. Uh, and it also fits well with the uh, Comets in the lineup as well. So it's it's a decent pickup, I would definitely say, uh, when it's, uh, you know, if you want to grind British. The Type 75 MLRS is a laughing stock. Uh, it's really a completely useless vehicle. Uh, it has, you know, 3130 millimeters. Yeah, if you want to have fun, go ahead. It's got night vision, I suppose. It doesn't pen anything, uh, but whenever I see this uh, on my team, I just feel like I have a wasted member on my team. Uh, the next one is the JU-288. This is a great SL grinder. Uh, my JU-288, basically, uh, so if I am not able to get my SL up, uh, then, oh, sorry, if I'm not able to get my activity up, uh, what I do is I play the JU-288, and the reason for that is because uh, you can normally trade, you know, 1 to 1 or 1 to 2, and you can also get a bunch of ground targets, get bases and everything like that, and it's a really cheap uh, repair cost, and you can, since it's a premium, you know, it's you get a lot of research, meaning that uh, if I only have, let's say, 2 or 3 hours to play in a 3 day period, I'm able to get my activity up to 100 really quickly with it. It's one of the bombers out there, which is very good uh, for what it does. It's got great speed, it's got the 20 on the back, it has access to really good bomb loads. There's a reason why this, the ME264 and the Grief keep going up in BR, because they're all incredibly good. The only problem with this thing right now is its dive speed isn't very good, but by the time that you've spawned, hit the bases and gone back to your airfield, there really shouldn't be anything that can touch you apart from maybe a P61, which is no longer in your BR bracket, so have fun with that. That. Uh, the <laughs> the JU-288 is really good if you want to turn off your brain and just go bomb some things, and it's great at uh, earning silver lines and RP. The next one is the AMX-13 SS-11. Uh, this was a premium I personally picked up when it came to the French ground forces when they first came out, just because I liked the idea of these light vehicles. The AMX-13 in itself uh, back then didn't have access to scouting. Now it does. So if you get up to it in the AMX-13, you can basically stay at the back. You can use your scouting mechanics, and then if anything gets too close, or at least close enough, you can use your SS-11s, which remember our uh, keyboard guided uh, SS11 600 millimeters of pen so you're never gonna have issues penning anything it fits really well into the French lineup of rank 4 which is an incredibly strong lineup and uh, the SS11 is a great addition which is a hell of a lot cheaper than other ones. You compare this to the Char 25T, the Char 25T is faster, it's technically got a better gun, doesn't have access to SS-11s, does have access to scouting, but the AMX-13 is 3,000 to repair, and the Char is 13,000. So if you don't want to burn a hole in your wallet, uh, the AMX-13 is the way to go, and you can run it with stuff like the AMX M4, which is an incredibly good machine, plus the 13 and also the 25T. It's a really fun lineup. Uh, to take, so I would definitely recommend that one. Then you have, of course, the profile icons. It would be nice at some point for these to change. Hopefully, in the new year, we see these change. You can see I've had them for a very long time, and uh, yeah, uh, they're just still sat here uh, after all this time. 
The if you want me to rank these in order of actually good, I suppose the 288 goes first, the 13 goes second, the AC4 goes third, and then strong E4. Just because I've already you know ground through the Soviets, this probably is a bit higher to an individual who wants to grind it out. But for me, you know, it's fourth, and then these two are equally useless, so they can be equally last. Uh, the next song is of course 300% RP booster. Uh, then you've got, of course, the decal itself. Uh, if you if you want the decal, you know that's always good to get. And this is the new thing. So this is the new one, uh, which you can actually get from the box. Uh, you can see all of the decals from this year. You basically uh, pick the box. You can see it's exactly the same price as the decal. So therefore, you know, it, it's if you want one of the older ones, you have an RNG chance of getting any of these. And as I said, these decals in the War Bomb box are the best ones in the game. Uh, they are the most high definition and the most interesting. You can see that they all have a really interesting little idea is to them and if you're interested in the history when it comes to military history these are definitely some things to look at so yeah uh, i would say if you are not interested in any of the vehicles and you're not interested in this decal uh, you can definitely pick up a, an old decal as well remember that uh, you can actually get both of these in the same month uh, if you really want to it's actually not too hard to do six special tasks and also what's that three thousand three hundred you can obviously to get that in a month then you have the branches always a good pickup as well the infantry helmets if you really want to have some interesting stuff and now onto the vehicles so uh, they actually changed this warbun shop uh, to make it slightly larger and i thought they made it slightly larger so you'd have situations like this where everything would fit on a page well we've gone <laughs> we've gone bigger and now everything doesn't fit on a, a, a page again so yeah that's a bit of a problem anyway let's go through the vehicles so the tb3m the mothership as it's known this is a 1.3 rank one machine it is one of the uh, it's one of my favorite vehicles in the game just because of how slow how big and how armed it is it is one of those ones where if you let it get to the enemy it's going to wreck house the problem is it's going to take an absolute year to get to the enemy the actual uh, secondary weapons that this thing has access to 2400 kilo bombs 12 250s and of course the 4 500 and 4 250s loadouts this is a 1.3 machine the only vehicle that eclipses this in uh, bomb load at this BR is of course the Farman, uh, which still nobody wants to talk about uh, for some reason. I have no idea. I'm going to point it out once again in this video, even though it may annoy a few people. The Farman, this huge thing, is at 1.3 and it has a 52 by 50 kilo bomb load. Right? <laughs> That is what, so 50 times 5 is 200 and what, 250, so that's 2,500, add uh, two more, so 2,600 kilos worth of bombs, a 1.3. I'm sure I got my maths wrong there, hopefully I didn't. So yeah, uh, that, that is something to point out, uh, because nobody seems to play it, so everybody seems to forget it. You can finish a match in two of those things, if you really want to. So with the TB3M, uh, it is just a magnificent machine. Uh, it's never going to be really too useful, because it's incredibly slow. Even though it gets a really high air spawn, uh, it just takes ages to really get anywhere. It's really fun in custom battles, and also if you're at really low BRs in Soviet ground vehicles, you can bring it in and basically nuke an area, but understand you are going to die to something with an auto cannon. Also has really good defense on it, you know, three sets of dual 762s, and also it has two 762s in the wings, <laughs> right down here. I feel sorry for the people who have to stay in these positions. So above it, it's got great coverage, you know, six 762s, so it's got two pilots below it, not so much. So basically approach it from here, go through it, and you'll annihilate. It's, it's just a great machine, uh, just because it's so huge, uh, so humongous, and it's one of those machines which is kind of iconic to War Thunder, even though it's not very good. You know, it, it definitely has its place in the game, and I hope we eventually get more TB3s. I also really like the uh, cockpit, because it reminds me of like an old uh, style car, uh, when it comes to, you know, uh, driving along. Uh, of course, 
when it comes to the TB3 itself. It has the huge, uh, old, massive wooden propellers on it. And of course, the smoke and the flames uh, from what are some incredibly big uh, engines. I would definitely say it's a pickup, not because it's too useful. I mean, it's a rank one premium, so it's not very good at researching stuff. But it's one of those vehicles that only comes around every so often. So if you haven't picked it up, I would say go for this one because you never know when it's going to be back. And those moments where you're in a discord or you're talking to mates and you're like, you know what, let's just go toss around. They bring the POTUs, you bring a TB3M and have a bit of fun, you know. And at the end of the day, that's what War Thunder is about, having fun. The next vehicle is the KV-1B 756. This is a solid vehicle, which when it first came out, I would actually kind of say was a little bit overpowered. The reason for this is you were blending two really good ideas, the idea of armor and also really good gun penetration. Now at 4.7, now remember it was lower BR before, it runs into a lot more enemies, which can pretty much annihilate it. And uh, its armor doesn't stand up to scrutiny uh, against a lot of British and American and guns. Uh, the armor being only 100 on the turret, then it's got this weird area uh, on the bottom here where you're looking at about 100, uh, 100 millimeters to 80 millimeters around the place where you can easily pen with pretty much any round you find. So yeah, it's, um, it's armor doesn't really stack up, but it's 75 is incredibly deadly even at this BR. It's got good speed behind it, and also if you angle it well, of course you'll do well. There's an issue as well, as there always is with these KVs where the shots get just eaten by this track layer here even if you shoot below it uh, so make sure to uh, dodge that uh, without even hitting also if you ping the turret in this uh, that doesn't mean that it's dead uh, the reason why is because you've got two people down here so it's not as easy to one shot as you may think overall it's a very solid vehicle I personally have detested fighting it over the years, and uh, it's one of those vehicles I'll never pick up just because of, uh, you know, how it was in War Thunder back in the day. But if you're looking for a good grinder, you know, it's a good pick. The only issue, I suppose, uh, on top of what I've already said, is the fact that it doesn't fit into that 4-0 disgraceful lineup that the Germans have. Obviously, it's 4-7, but the 4-0 of the KV-1B, the Panzerkampfwagen, Churchill, uh, something else like the Befezwagen 4-6 or the T-34, basically the non-German lineup as it's known. You know, all of these plus the IL-2 plus, you know, uh, something else as well. It's a disgraceful, disgusting lineup. And also, because it's rank 3, you're able to get the same bonuses as the KV-1B, apart from uh, it's... Uh, no, no, they're exactly the same, apart from this gets a little bit SL, a little bit less SL. So yeah, uh, it's a disgraceful lineup, along with the 5.7 premium lineup that you see before you. But uh, say no more, say no more. The next vehicle is the Elko 80 footer. Now this to me is one of my favorite premiums when it comes to ships. The reason is, is because I've had a lot of fun in the PT boats for the Americans. I think they're a really good mix of, uh, they're a really good mix of torpedoes and also guns, uh, which is something that, you know, you can't always say all the time for a lot of these ships. Uh, the problem with a lot of the British ships is, you know, sometimes they're lacking guns, but they have good torpedoes. Sometimes they're lacking torpedoes and, you know, or sometimes they've got torpedoes but lacking guns. Then you have something like the SGB, which brings it all together in a nice little package. That's what I feel like when I look at this Elko 80 footer at 3.0. Remember, I play arcade uh, naval. You have access to the wonderful, you know, uh, the wonderful torpedoes. You also have access to a 37, a 20, and then of course the quad 20 on the back, the Thunderbolts. And the only issue with this machine is that it can't really deal with stuff at range. Uh, unless you torpedo it. So if you get up to it and, uh, you know, you go up against a lot of larger ships, then you're going to have to struggle a little bit trying to get torps on board. But because you have the speed, because you have the PT boat idea of acceleration, you can fly around the place and get close to things, bat people with these 20s, and just do so much damage to them. Also, it fits really well into the 3.0 lineup for the Americans, which is an incredibly strong one. So you've got the Elko 77 footer, the Higgins at 27, the Elko 80 footer, the Elko 80 footer 565, these three right here 
If you replace the Higgins with the Elko, you have an insane lineup, and it's really good for actually doing uh, stuff such as Operation Heat, and I'm sure the Festive events that will be com coming up soon, uh, just because it has access to torpedoes, it can do damage, it can get wins, uh, you know, it can get captures. Basically, the general criteria that you need for challenges, the Elko AC Footer, along with the other Elkos, is really good for doing. So yeah, it's, uh, in my opinion, and it's one of the funnest uh, premiums out there and also one of the best when it comes to naval. The Achilles 65 regiment of course is an Achilles uh, so it is an M10 uh, which is slightly modified to have the 17 pounder on it. This means that it struggles in turret rotation you can see 2.7 degrees per second uh, 10 degrees of gun depression though which is nice. The armor is of course trolley as well as with all of these vehicles. I don't know why this uh, gun mantler just eats shells when it feels like it. The general speed of the vehicle is okay and also having the 50 cal on top is really nice. Having an open topped vehicle at 4.0 is incredibly dangerous though and uh, that means that you get killed a lot just from the top. I have had a lot of bad experiences in M10s and Achilles uh, in general when it comes to War Thunder and the main reason is is because whenever I look at them and I look at their 4 OBR you can see the, the Achilles right here which is the one in the tech tree. It actually has add-on armor. So you can see the armor is a lot more uh, bulky in this one. Uh, let's just see, does this one actually get the add-on armor? It just doesn't show it. Yeah, this one gets the add-on armor as well. So this is probably a better representation of what you're actually getting. But the thing is, with this for a machine, I just look at stuff like, why aren't I just taking the Mark III Churchill or the Sherman II or, you know, the Crusader AA, the Excelsior? There's so many better options than the Achilles because the, the Achilles has one thing really going for it, and that's the power of the gun. And apart from that, and it's gun depression as well, but apart from that, you are either lackluster at stuff or you're just not very good. And the main problem is getting the gun on target. So even though even though it's a turreted tank destroyer, which is the main issue a lot of tank destroyers have, where they don't have a turret, so you have to turn the whole vehicle to get the gun on target, you still have to do the same thing with this because of how bad its turret rotation speed is. So I just, I really don't like the Achilles and M10 series because of that incredibly slow turret. I've just been in too many frustrating situations with it where I've personally just not had a good time. Then you have the Chiha shotgun. This is a meme. Uh, I, I don't know how else to put it. Uh, once they changed uh, how the HE works for this machine uh, and only gave it 30 millimeters worth of pen, uh, at 1.7, yes, you can donk on fools, but at the same time, you can be in a lot of situations where you're staring at a Stuart or you're staring at a Panzer II, and they're staring back at you, and you're, you know, waving at them, and you shoot them with, of course, the uh, this uh, wonderful chode gun. And the problem you have is with 290 meters per, meters per second, you're probably going to miss a decent amount. And then on top of this, you have no guarantee that your shell is going to do anything. So I have this uh, machine, basically because uh, it was on offer at one time in a sale and I picked it up just uh, to have fun with some mates and that's what it is. It's another one of these vehicles like the TB3 but it's got a lot less use than the TB3 and a lot it's a lot less unique and a lot uh, less iconic as well but if you just want to chill you know kick it back uh, earn some SL this is a machine for you but do understand it's going to be a little bit frustrating to play when you hit somebody and they just look at you and laugh at you at the same time though the moment that you pop targets and you actually do something it feels incredibly rewarding the Yak-3 for the French. Now, the Yak-3 for the French is a nice little fighter to actually play. And the reason why is because a lot of France struggles when it comes to the aircraft. I think, uh, for me, the aviation side of French when, French, when I was grinding through them, uh, it was kind of sullied by the fact that the German P-47 was at the height of its use. Therefore, a lot of vehicles, like the MB-157, I really struggled with using uh, against the P-47. And then something like the Yak-3 came out later on, and I thought, okay, well, this is a counter to the problems that I've been having. And then, of course, they gave away a weekend Yak-19, and by gave away, I mean you had to GE it. And <laughs> at the same time, uh, with the Yak-3 uh, that you see here, 
overall what what you get out of this vehicle is uh, very decent stats decent 20 millimeter which still struggles at high altitude so that's the main issue you know you're gonna have with it so even though it's it's a nice mid to low altitude fighter that's not the problem that france has at 4.0 you know it has the p63 which can do that and it can do it slightly better than the act 3 apart from a low altitude but the the problem is high altitude and the french only really have the vb10 so if you want to get the act 3 to grind through you know the uh rank 4, rank 3, rank 2, and rank 1, I can completely understand, because as a person who ground through rank 1, rank 2, rank 3, rank 4, I can definitely say that it wasn't too fun uh, playing the uh, French, just from my point of view, until you got stuff like the VB10 and uh, certain gems such as the VG33C. So, yeah, the, the Yak-3 is a good aircraft, but it's nothing special. It's just one that'll get you through the tree. And the last vehicle is, of course, the Duck. The Romanian Duck, which uh, I do need to check which one this actually is, because there is technically two in the game. There's one in the German tech tree, which I don't think I have, uh, so that's probably the one that it's not pointing to. Uh, the other one is, of course, in the Italian tech tree, which sits right here. So one of the things that Italy struggles with when it comes to these, uh, when it comes to its ground, is a useful vehicle at 3.3 uh, to, an to annihilate stuff. Uh, it does have a good air superiority fighter in the form of the C202EC with the uh, with the inclusion of the RE2001. It's got a decent fighter bomber, but it's still not really a fighter bomber. It's more of an air superiority fighter. And then of course you got the P108A, which is maybe the biggest joke in the game with its uh, large uh, long this and the 102 millimeter that you find is uh, just really annoying to use uh, so to have a vehicle let, let's say you really like ground right let's say you really want to grind through the italian tech tree you've got a really good 3.3 lineup if you have the leoncello even without the leoncello you've got a pretty good 3.3 lineup you know, you've got either the 7534 or the 10525 plus the P40 in the tech tree. And then, of course, you've got the Contra Aereo. And then on top of it, you have the Leoncello if, uh, you know, you have it. You also have the ability to use this duck a little bit higher at 4.0, 3.7. But anything above that, it's going to get eaten uh, by pretty much any fighter that's around the place. So if you, as an individual, really like playing ground forces, this is not a bad pickup because it has access to the uh, MK-103. And the MK-103 can pen 95 millimeters of armor, meaning that this duck, even though it's got really weak engines and it can be an absolute pig's eye to fly sometimes, uh, it can actually get around the air at a decent click. And also, the gun is what you're basically buying this thing for. Uh, you're getting it for that gun or for the 37. I don't know why you take the 37, though. It pens up to uh, 142, but it's uh, you know you get a lot less out of it. You get uh, let's see, so you get 30 round, you get 100 rounds for the 37. Uh, sorry, you get 100 rounds for the 30, and then you only get 12 for the 37. So it's so much better just to take this, just for the extra ammunition. So those, that's the instance you know where you, where you get the duck if you really like ground forces for Italy. There isn't really much other redeeming factors for it. It's pretty useless and aerialist. You know, you can take out a few medium tanks and then you'll die, or you can try and play it as a support fighter and you'll just die instantly because it doesn't have the power. So yeah, there, there's only one real scenario where it's useful. So if, if I was going to go through what I would pick uh, for these... Uh, it would definitely be the TB3M first, just because of the fact that you never know when it's back, so I would definitely pick it up for its iconic value. Then the Alco, uh, it's very useful and very fun to use. KV-1B, uh, just because of the fact that it has uh, good rewards on it, also really, really cheap repair cost, and a good 75. That 75 is easily the best gun at its BR, really, really nice. Then uh, the Act 3 uh, just because to get you through that French grind, then on top of that, uh, it would be, or it would have to be, the HS129, just to run with the Italian ground since they don't have a better alternative. The Chiha shortgun, 
uh, actually loses to the Achilles. So the Achilles, to me, is second to last place. I uh, just, I cannot stand its gun handling characteristics, especially with its turret traverse. And the Chiha shotgun comes in last, unless you want it for a little bit of meme value. And at the end of the day, who doesn't, uh, apart from the people who are going for the TB3M, because that would be much more useful for that idea. So I'm happy to see the fact that we are getting changes to the uh, Warbond shop like this one. This is a really positive change, and hopefully we get an expansion of this into the next year as well, plus hopefully some other stuff. But this, this has to be one of the best lineups for the uh, War One shop in an incredibly long time. So that that is just awesome to see for people who really like grinding out these vehicles. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Ambrosius McClellan, B. Young, Blackie, Daniel Stanton, J. Wiltz, John Ryman, Joseph Anders, Martinez, Moxie, Super Cacti, Uyens Terry, E Love Goat and Seductive Trashcan for supporting the channel.